This Kelloland Living segment is sponsored by Vance Thompson Vision, striving to provide world-class care for every patient, every day. Have you noticed a change in your vision that isn't being corrected with contacts or glasses? It could be known as a condition called keratoconus, a progressive corneal disease that occurs in one out of 2,000 people. In good news, there is advanced diagnostic testing for early intervention options, and this testing can be done right here in Kelloland. I recently sat down with Dr. Daniel Trevine at Vance Thompson Vision to learn more about corneal collagen crosslinking, one of the newest treatment options to halt the progression of the disease. Thanks for having me out here at Advanced Thompson Vision. Yeah, Ashley, thanks for coming. We're happy to have you. Okay, we're talking about a subject today that has a lot of hard words in it, so <laughs> we're going to have you. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'm okay. an English teacher, so. So, keratoconus. 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 Yep. We're talking about keratoconus. Yep. The word's hard enough to say. How can you explain it? Yeah, it's an interesting disease. So, Kerato basically means cornea, and so it's a disease of the cornea, and conus sounds just like it is. It's cone. And so what keratoconus is, it's, it's a progressive disease where the cornea, which is kind of the front window on the front part of your eye, it covers the colored part of your eye, which is the iris. Uh, that colored part, or the, the cornea, weakens over time. And as it weakens, it becomes thin and it kind of bulges out. And if that progresses, then it can lead to uh, severe vision loss. Can it lead to blindness? Yeah, it, it is a cause of blindness in the U.S. Now we have some new treatments for it, but it was a very common cause of, of blindness, you know, decades ago. What are some of the maybe risk factors, or maybe I should say, is there any way it can prevent? Yeah. Keratoconus is a, is a disease we don't understand well. We know there's a genetic component, so if your parents had keratoconus, you're more likely to get keratoconus. Uh, we know there's an environmental fact, so whether you have really bad allergies, sometimes that can be a risk factor. One of the most modifiable risk factors is eye rubbing, and so people who really get in there and they rub their eyes, um, that can cause keratoconus and it can cause it to progress and so there's a YouTube video of uh, eye rubbing uh, of an MRI and so if you go Google that MRI eye rubbing you'll see just how deformative eye rubbing is for the eye and how much it can weaken it. Is there a connection then why the why having allergies because I just feel like if I have allergies I'm rubbing my eyes Exactly more. so they don't know which came first the chicken or the egg but um, people with allergies tend to rub their eyes more and so that could be why they are more likely to develop keratoconus. Okay, so if I have it, can it be fixed? Yeah, so it's a very subtle disease it, and it starts when you're young, you know, it can start when you're 10 or 12 or 14 and so that's why regular eye exams are important um, and it presents really subtly at first. People can't see quite as well as they used to. Uh, they can't see in their glasses anymore. And as it slowly progresses, the cornea continues to thin and weaken, and it can form little holes in it, or it can get so bad that you can't see good with glasses, contact lenses, or anything. And so when that happens, um, then the only option is a cornea transplant, where we remove the cornea and we place a whole new one in. That's a big surgery for people. And so fortunately now we have some other treatments that can prevent keratoconus from getting worse. Okay, so let's talk about those because now everybody who's watching is yeah, like, okay, no, very nervous. I don't want to get all the way to the cornea transplant. So that's exactly right. We don't want to get to the cornea transplant. So it's very important that we catch it early and we treat it aggressively. So there's a procedure called corneal crosslinking. And what happens to our normal, I, I mentioned this is a disease that typically affects young people and progresses. We don't see it in older people. Uh, very often. And the reason is is because over time our cornea naturally strengthens. Between riboflavin in our diet and UV light, there's a bunch of little layers of the cornea. And over time they form crosslinks, like a little mesh uh, or rungs of a ladder, to really strengthen the cornea. And that's called corneal crosslinking. Our procedure is also called corneal crosslinking, but it's accelerated. And so what we do is we remove the skin surface of the eye. We use a very concentrated riboflavin drop and then a s very specific wavelength of UV light. And those in combination allow the cornea to rapidly crosslink. And what it does is it can take that, uh, you know, that steepening that's happened and that thinning and it can flatten it back out and help regularize the cornea. 
So you take a really irregular cone-shaped cornea and you regularize it so it becomes much more round, much more like a basketball or a baseball. Now if I do cross-linking, will I probably be good then going forward or is there a chance to need additional yeah. help? Uh, Cross-linking is an amazing procedure. It's been done in Europe for almost 30 years. Uh, it was invented there and it was invented because they had noticed that this is what happens to cro corneas uh, naturally. And the procedure is almost 90% effective and it's curative. So if you do the procedure once and you stop eye rubbing, uh, then most people are cured and then they don't go on to that corneal transplant. They don't get worse and it stabilizes things and prevents them from having uh, worse complications. Now, as a mom, you know, you talked about it affecting kids often and I don't know if my kids would know how to even express something that they were having with their vision. Is this going to get picked up in a regular eye exam? Yeah, you know, I, whenever I, I've got two, two daughters and whenever I see them rubbing their eyes, I say, don't rub your eyes, don't rub your eyes. Um, and so I'm kind of very nervous about them rubbing their eyes. And it should get picked up in a regular eye exam. Your, your regular family eye care doctor should be able to notice that their, their prescription is worsening at an abnormal rate. Uh, there's a device called a topographer. Basically, you know, we mentioned that it becomes like a cone. And so that's like a, if you look at a, a topographic map, you can see where there's elevations. And there's a device that can do that to your cornea. And so uh, some people think that every kid should have a topographic map when they're younger. There's a, 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 most of the eye care providers do have that. And so if you feel like your prescription's worsening, uh, your kid can get that done and then they should know for sure whether it's keratoconus or not. Maybe you just see them rubbing their eyes a lot. Yeah. I, mean, I know what I'm going to be focused on now. Yeah. So ectasia. Yeah. So ectasia is, uh, is, that, is what happens with keratoconus. It's that thinning and weakening. That word is ectasia. But ectasia can happen from other things too. So anything that overly thins and weakens the cornea can cause ectasia. So if people uh, get LASIK in a place that doesn't do enough testing, um, doesn't uh, do enough preoperative examination, then their cornea can become too weak from that LASIK surgery. Uh, and that can allow that same sort of uh, bulging and weakening and thinning to happen. And if that happens, actually, the treatment's the exact same because the process is the exact same. The cornea is, is too weak, and so then we can strengthen it with the cross-linking. All right, we started with a big word, but we ended with my, my takeaway. My number one takeaway is to tell my kids to stop rubbing their eyes. Yes. And I thank you so much for sitting down and yeah, kind of Yeah, thank you. This. Uh, you know, I tell patients that if they're not going to stop rubbing, we can either do this surgery or we can do an arm amputation. But <laughs> they can't rub their eyes anymore. So uh, thanks for coming in. And we're happy to see, you know, if, if you feel like your kids uh, could use an exam, you know, we would do that. I would do a topography on any kid that had a question free of charge just because it's so important that we catch it early because it can really, really save someone's vision. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Ashley. You'll be greeted with excellence from the moment you walk in the doors at Vance Thompson Vision. If you'd like to schedule a consultation with any one of the experts at Vance Thompson Vision to talk about which vision correction surgery is the best option for you, give them a call in Sioux Falls at 605-361-EYES, that's 3937. You can also find out more by visiting vancethompsonvision.com.